Hey, welcome back to Scorecast Next. It is a Q&A and it's a live special. We're in the retreat in Morzine and we've got eight special guests with us. And uh, they got asked to um, fill in a questionnaire at the beginning where they said, um, if you've got three questions you'd like to ask Tim and Jacko, what would they be? And they all filled them in with varying degrees of... Um, What's the right word? Hilarity. Or... <laughs> yeah, serious, yeah, seriousness. So um, in, in sort of school cast sense fashion, we're going to try and unpack some of those. Um, some will be serious and some will be more light-hearted. <laughs> That's it. I haven't got anything else to add to that. That was Sorry. good. Um, it's a bit like question time, isn't it? I feel like that. <laughs> Someone's going to start stand up and go, is it right? Flipping... Go out of really? <laughs> yeah. But it's nice. Like, so anyone that's seen our Q and A's, we literally like. It's quite funny that normally um, it started off with I like really like being questioned myself. I felt like that was quite a prestigious um, thing to hold. So, and I like to try and not, I'd keep them like a secret from Tim unless he'd seen them come in on YouTube or Facebook or whatever. And um, and then just actually just seeing the general reaction of like, what do you actually <laughs> think about this? You had no time to prepare it, and so like if. You've, any of the questions, if you've got anything that's different, like um, then, then just 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 ask away because actually there's the the raw sort of um, answer whether it is just funny or whether it is actually serious. What's your take on this? Then they fancy yeah. himself as a young David Dimbleby. Well, then, <laughs> <laughs> but then it's like, then Tim's getting jealous, so we have to then share it out, and so then it was the, an the last hierarchy. Of form, <laughs> I didn't like it. The, well, it was you were giving out the best information. I was just there to facilitate you to give it out. But um, the. Uh, so will you now get to be question masters, which is a prestigious thing to have. Um, but the last one, the la so it got to the point, the last one, it's not gone out yet, not aired yet, but it was, I, I had a couple, and then Tim had one, he couldn't stop laughing because he was like, he knew how, yeah, you'll, you'll, see, you'll get to see that one, the question, but. Uh, open the floor to anybody who, that, Amy, do you want to go first? I'm going to pick on you. Shelly hosts, Amy and Ian. Um, so... I've been working on forearm sand for a little while and um, I can make some air for like, a fair few seconds but I can't quite drag myself away from the wall even though I put myself near the wall and I don't even always touch the wall um, and I'm basically scared of falling in handstand and forearm stand so um, how do you kind of get over that? This is a pretty stupid question, isn't it? No, just no, no. <laughs> we had it today. We had a question today, so I'm asking about how do you get over the fear? Any like, good techniques like how to fall kind of vaguely safely? Because in forearm stand, it scares me because you, I could end, feel like I could end up in quite a painful position, like through the shoulders. Yeah. Well, Anne's done over a thousand skydives, so I assume you know <laughs> how to land <laughs> safely, <laughs> how to fall <laughs> safely. <laughs> you, you answered that, yeah. Uh, a question today. I'll yeah, but, um, on YouTube about this. Yeah. Handstand's a little bit different. In the handstand, like, I totally understand that for a lot of people, it's it's the fear of going over the top. Um, I'll give like two two versions, and then if you can touch on the the forearm yeah. a bit, because it is a little bit different with the um, with the handstand. We can just rather than kick up against the wall and just constantly relying on the wall that way that it's never going to let me go over the top, which feels nice, and you can practice being upside down and just get comfortable upside down. But as soon as you take that wall away you can still just fall over the top. Um, and so for some people, even just kicking up into that position is um, one of the questions I had before, is they're just, how do you even, like, you're saying starting point, kick up against the wall, and it's like, well, I'm actually scared of kicking up against the wall. But that's where we recommend doing the, the wall walks, where you'll go um, backwards up. So if I, I put my hands on the floor and I'd walk my feet up the wall that way, the nice thing about that is, and we've just been talking about leaves and angles, where I can literally, if I'm scared as anything, I can just stay in basically a press-up position with my feet up on the wall, and I can just walk a little bit and get closer and closer and closer, and 45 degrees might be where I'm comfortable and I'm about to poo my pants, and I just I, I hang out there, but I can still work on my alignment, so have a straight line, it's just not vertical, and as the time goes on, you'll get more confident to go up. But whilst you're doing that, you're working on that alignment, you're working on your core strength, you're working on linking your glutes to control your hip, and you're working on your shoulders still getting loads of strength and stability, so... Um, that would be one, and my other would be. Um, I'm a, I'm a big fan of like if we're if we're scared of something to go um, right. Sh let's go and show us what's like the worst case scenario and have a version for that. So um, a lot of the time going like from frog stands and like what or a headstand. What happens if I go over the top? Well, actually, if you were to do, if I said everyone try and do a forward roll, you put your hands on the floor, you put your head to make a triangle, like if you're doing a, a headstand or a tripod, and you'd virtually just roll over, and your head, back of your head might brush the floor or not, and you'd be, there you go, forward roll, like happy days. So actually going up intention, going into like a frog stand or 
and my head's down and intentionally going, I'm going to do a forward roll and just letting your brain go, well, that actually wasn't anything to be worried about. Um, just takes away that sort of, that fear. Because the fear, fear of something we were talking about um, yesterday, like fear of, it's always, it tends to be either the unknown of like the future or the past and it's not what's happening in the present moment. And just giving yourself like, well, that is, what's worst case happen if I go this, well, I can do a forward roll. Um, and and you, as long as you've practiced that, then you know that that's safe for you. And the other one is actually to, is, is to get used to almost rotating out of it. So you're like, particularly for your yeah. flexibility is good enough. So if you're going to go up and over, actually you'd be able to put your hands on the floor with your feet on the floor at the same time. So if your feet are in the air, they come through, just literally just roll yourself over and rotate out of it. And it becomes a semi kind of cartwheel mm. type position. Mm. But you actually find that your feet are on the ground, your hands are on the floor and you've, you've kind of just made that safe landing position. Yeah, that's probably actually my first, that's where we would have first gone with a lot of people. Like we go, if you're kicking up and anyone that would do, if anyone's got that in their program for tomorrow, like just going, I will always, there's no like, um, when I'm, if I'm going to lose balance, there's no, oh, well, shall I go that way or that way? It's like I've got a, a side that I always yeah. bail to and always do. And when you're losing it, it's like push off to that side and, and just land on, mm. you, on your feet. So having, a, having different bail options is... Yeah, yeah I totally agree. The other one is the, the forearm stand. The reality with the forearm stand is that you're quite unlikely to go over the top because of the shape that you're in. You've got firm base of support, hands are pushing down, and you're actually making that spinal arch position. So you really got to crank pretty hard and shift a lot of weight onto the hands to actually feel like you're going to topple. I don't think I've ever gone over the top in a forearm stand, even though a lot of people do it against the wall. Partly, I think, because the wall gives you some feedback about where you're in space, but you'll probably find most of the time as you go forearm stand, if you don't get it right, your feet end up back right. on the ground. So that one is a little bit about having enough confidence to actually create the tension to, to get the arch. And, and the handstand and, and the hand balance in the forearm stand is the same thing. Often we just say to people, the only thing you need to remember in a wall handstand is keep pushing. Because people kick up and all of a sudden they panic because upside down, they forget to push and then they're on the head. With the four, if the handstand keep pushing, you always got a firm base of support to be able to move your body around. And the same with the forearm stand, if you keep pushing tension down, you're going to keep that upward height and then your chances are you're going to come down. If you stop pushing and you allow yourself to go over and you're not keeping the tension in it, I guess you could go over. But um, yeah, I, I think it's that you've got to have the confidence that you need to crank on that extension, the back and the bum to try and create that lift, but keep pressure down on the floor. And Jacko, like, actually, you, like, you, you'll fall. Like, it does happen. Like, there was one time I walked into the gym and um, Jacko had been training. And he's like, he walks up to me and it looks like someone's taking a red lipstick and drawing it across his forehead in a straight line. Was like, and I was like, what? Red draw. <laughs> like, literally that long, about that thick. And we, had, we were doing a photo shoot for a company. I had a client that after, I'd literally been training and then they, like, came and they were like, you all right? And I was like... Literally, like, it, was, it wasn't just like um, a graze, it was actually like blood coming. So I was like, I had a piece of tissue in my pocket and was like, I'm going to dab it every now and again. Yeah, we were doing a photo shoot on Friday, first one that we'd done for a company that we were working with. But like, he'd hit the ground on, on, a, on AstroTurf and he'd, he'd done it. But put mats down, pad it up, put cushions down, yeah. whatever makes it. But you've got to get to that point where actually I'm not afraid to fail and I'll deal yeah. with the consequences. Um, but set yourself up for success yeah. or like um, I know for me like doing like hand balancing stuff in a really small area I don't like lifts and stuff like that anyway, so I'm probably a bit claustrophobic but if I was to do a handstand with loads of space where I'm not going to hit anything it, it doesn't bother me whereas if you were like right do it now right there next to me it'd be like the skill is exactly the same but having stuff around like is, is putting me off so when I'm learning and practicing I want to try and make that feel as safe and as comfortable as possible. We'll have a look so. tomorrow. We'll do some coaching tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Next one. Anybody that can be shy now? Awkward silence. What's the story behind the protein powder photo? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that Tim's question? Have you seen the photo? No. <laughs> I'll get it up in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I think, I ha yeah, I think you have shown me. I think so, Tim... Well, back when I played rugby, um, there was a keep period talking, where keep talking, there was a period where uh, my hairdresser um, became my wife, and I'd not probably not even that point grown it that long. We were we we, we had pre-season one year, and um, one of the lads just went like he was a bit 
bit of a loose cannon and he, he was like oh, I think it would be really cool if like we, we talk about the back three used to be like the wingers and the fullback like we'd be a bit of a, a mini team within a team and he's like, I think it would be really cool if we all had moustaches and mullets so I go I go back home and um, Kathleen cuts Kathleen cuts my hair <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen cuts my hair and we, and we leave at business at the front party at the back is what we used to say um, <laughs> And um, <laughs> and um, Is that you? yeah, so so the um, <laughs> <laughs> the mullet became a bit. I think I've actually got wax pants on there as well, you know. But anyway, the, um, so the mullet became a bit of a thing, and then one of the um, one of the <laughs> supplement companies that used to sponsor us um, needed some photos doing, and um, the woman that ran the um, business, really liked that leather sofa. <laughs> and so did you, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> and asked if we'd sit there. It's classy marketing, that, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. I think it was wiped before it was sold on. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually still available if you want it. <laughs> still smells of In black pepper. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Fifty what was it? What's that quote from a fifty percent of the time it works every time? That's enough of that. That's the story, yeah. But the good thing about Google is that's what I was gonna that's what I was talking about. Really? So it doesn't yeah, yeah that's <laughs> that was that um someone had said something and Tim replied going, um if make sure like uh, Google search David Jackson rugby mullet and then all these types of things there's a few other things come up in there as well and that's one of them it's my checking it past yeah yeah anybody else <laughs> so, so when you when you tell people you know like if you're a comedian and you, you they say oh yeah, I'm a comedian they go tell me a joke so you and they, they, they find that quite hard because it's just to say a joke straight up I've got loads of jokes Calisthenics they're like right Show me something. What's your best party trick? What is it? Like, you can just do, like, in any any sort of, you know, in a pub or whatever. What is there anything you like, you, you know? I mean, we went to this. We, we, when yeah. we first started the business, we went, we went to the, the Nottingham Sheriff, Sheriff of Nottingham's Dragon's Den. And it was a, it was a pitch to win a three grand grant business. So we went in and we pitched up and we did a, we had, like, we, Jack and I went in vests and shorts. We went out with other business partner, Tomo. And he was like in suit and stuff. Yeah. Like his and all so the other them. contestants there were obviously in suits and whatnot. So yeah, so they were like bored of these people. And the sheriff was there with his proper like all his regalia on. And we were like, we can explain what calisthenics is, but we'll just show you. So we have this partner dragon flag where Dave sort of like I, I put my shoulders on his knees, and then Dave holds me with one hand, and then like we lower down into this position. So we were like, um, we got it, and we won, we got the grant, and then we went to the, to the we had to go to that like, t- tea with the sheriff of Nottingham to go and pick the the, the check up, and we were like, we're hoping that we're going to get one of these massive checks because <laughs> <that's laughs> just like made I've out still got the check at home. Brilliant. Um, Chubby like Robin Hood comes in and nicks it away. <laughs> <laughs> Dave was like, let's go in shorts and vest again. Like Dave was at the council house, we need to go presentable. So what we did is we went in like smart clothes, <laughs> yeah, like vests <laughs> underneath, <laughs> and then they gave us a check and they were like, oh, can, you, can, you, can you show us anything? Like, it's like, oh, I'm totally not prepared. Vest off. And then Brilliant. we've got a photo of us doing a, a handstand next to the show of Nottingham. We stood there with his holding his staff, just looking completely <laughs> amused. Is the photo available? I'll, I'll dig it. Out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's on there. He's got the ball. So we generally we generally opt for that one because it's uh, yeah. yeah, it looks pretty cool. We'll do one tomorrow. Yeah, I'll have a go at it. We Dave said we'd do it tonight, and I was like, I'm a bit smoked from the session, <laughs> so maybe they don't want to bother. But then, funny, we don't do it very often these days. No, we did. We did a video on it. We did a how to oh, how yeah. to join Cirque du Soleil. To- um, we were like, we, we can't guarantee that you'll get into Cirque du Soleil this move, but if you're in the Cirque du Soleil, it'd be one this of the ones you'd be expected to be able to perform. Yeah, it's our most Cirque du Soleil style rubbish thing that we can do. Yeah, so our act at the Cirque du Soleil would be about 15 seconds and then we'd be off. <laughs> like, if you can do a, like if you can do a dragon flag, um, yeah. I can, I can, I'll try it with you, I'll try and do yeah. it tomorrow. You sure are. <laughs> Do the dragon. There you go. <laughs> Says that guy for you. Get the sofa out. Fifty. The dra- Do the, uh, assist the dragon play. I like the one that um, that Neil's got on his. The second part of that question. What the 
But honestly, though, were you happy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, the thing's preceded by, how did you get so ripped? Honestly, though, are you happy? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's because every now and well, not every now and again, regularly Tracy will just get up and go, Look at, <laughs> Look at these guys, I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are they happy though? Are they happy? <laughs> yeah. Could, could you look really sad and unhappy? <laughs> Is that the bit we trying? trying. Yeah. I haven't learned how to control the eyebrow. Have you sort that out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, we actually consider ourselves, on a serious note, to be massively fortunate to do what we do now. Um, and it's, it's hard, like, I think anybody. Everybody works hard these days. Like you know, no one doesn't work hard, really. But um, we get to have a bit of a laugh while we're doing it, and it's. Uh, I think that's one of the things that we really enjoy. Like we graft, like we put a lot of time in. But we're, we're fortunate to work with, with really good people. We've got people like Harvey and Tomo, and <coughs> a guy called Seth and and Lani, and there's other people in our team now that's growing. But a lot of it is affecting like the training and like how we wanted to train was actually we we wanted to get back to having fun. And training had got boring. It was just in the gym, just doing the same old stuff and jumping around between programs and just, I don't know, just doing training because you felt like you needed to. And then calisthenics for us all of a sudden came to a bit of a, it, it brought in fun and play back into our training. And then we tell this story a lot, but people literally said to us, like, what are you doing in the gym? Because it looks like you're messing about. I and mean, you guys, like what we've done tonight, you guys, you're just messing about. We just got, we can do a few more things to play with than we could at the start. And we're marginally better. Um, but I like that sort of stuff like just do it because it's because it's fun and yeah to, what's that phrase like if you get cool uh, pictures from it as well yeah, yeah. <laughs> some cool photos um, yeah. enjoy what you do you never work a day in your life yeah. and I think that's a big thing like in, in the last for me as, a, as in S&C and working for myself for the last 9-10 years like it's been hard and trying to get established in performance sport and get to the point where you achieve what you want to do is that it, it takes a lot of of effort, time, and emotional stress, and I think if we can get now to a point where we just go to work and have a laugh, and we take it seriously, as I hope you guys appreciate, but um, or can see, but we generally have quite a good time. Yeah. We don't fall out very often. And in, like in terms of training, like enjoying it, I'm, like one of the when when Tim really started playing about with some handstands and that was when I'd got back into. I, was, I think I was we were talking over dinner. I think I was talking with you nearly over dinner about it going um, yesterday going. Um, well, when I, I used to, I always loved training, always loved lifting weights. I just loved that part of it ever since I was a, as a kid doing a hundred sit-ups every night before bed and then in the morning, regardless from the age of like, I don't know, 12 to like 80. Like I just always loved tr- sort of training. So if anyone wants to know how he got those out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> long yeah. time ago. So any 30, yeah, if any 13 year olds listening, <laughs> what is it? Just, just tell them again. It's, it's a hundred. Well, they used to do some variations, like some, some bicycle crunches or- Oh really? Mix it up. Yeah, mix it up a little bit. Or eat a tortoise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Um, would also work <laughs> but when I, when I, and but it was all based around because I wanted to be like you know my dream was to be a professional player or to play for international or whatever but when when I was when I was playing rugby had that thing at the end of the week whether it was a Friday night game Saturday or Sunday there was a game to get ready for and when that went away because I had to retire I'd, I'd never struggled with motivation for training ever until until then and it took me a while to get a year before I could run without getting a headache, and it was about six months properly till I could sort of train effectively. But as soon as I could, it was like get back in the gym and dead quickly. I was like, "What am I, what am I doing? I'm just doing bicycles. I want my arms a bit bigger." Or it just I'd lost that sort of drive, which was a bit like a bit of a surprise. Um, so then go when when Tim started playing about with that, and I was like, "Yeah, I'd, like I've always said, like I don't know where I'd seen human flags before, but it's like I, I was aware of a like, human flag and semi on the line of like." Are they all photoshopped? Is it actually possible? And then trying it and going, that feels impossible. <laughs> Maybe it is photoshopped, but like then working out to be able to to do that. And the first thing we actually did was a back leave, wasn't it? After about three months, something like that. Um, and actually back then it was like we could hold it for like a second, and that that in our head counted. So that was like that was cool. But it gave us it gave me that buzz of like having something to work towards, and like then you know doing things that you you didn't used to be able to do was just something that really like like floats my boat if you like um so i found that that then gives me that that motivation that i was lacking before um which i think is a healthy way to approach training i think um a lot of us and i do it myself we can easily get bogged down in like 
I want to be fitter, I want to lose weight, I want to look this certain way, which I personally don't think is as potentially as healthy as, like I just want to be able to use my body effectively and like, you know, we've talked a little bit about long term, like progress of like, when I'm 50, 60, 70, Tim's got a, a little boy now and like, when Tim's 50, he wants to be able to run up a mountain with him, he doesn't want to be um, knackered um, or just still worried about what do I look like in my wax pants? <laughs> but you know, which is more, a concern. Yeah, but it's more like train for a, an outcome that's like mentally a bit more. I don't know what the right word is for that. Like, but you're you engaged, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And less like less about what you what your body looks like, which I don't think is that mentally positive for for us all the time and more like what can I actually do with my body and then I'll look however I look because a lot of that's going to be dependent on how much you can train how often you can do it what you do yeah Mm. yeah I always think we look like gymnasts and like can do some really cool stuff but they don't they're not in the gym worrying about what they look like they get that physique as a result of just training like a gymnast Mm. I think no one ever looks at a gymnast and goes, terrible rig. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, there's a lot to be said for actually just training like a, like a gymnast. And we, Dave terms Are you as a poor man as gymnastics. We don't pretend to be gymnasts. But the principles are the same. Managing your own body weight. And ultimately, like physically, as each of us are in different frames and we have different body types that we, we're, able, we're structured and built to be able to handle certain amounts of forces. So your bone mass is related to how much muscle mass you'll be able to build. So you can't outgrow your total bone mass effectively. Like it's, I think it's 2.4 times your bone mass is how much muscle mass you can actually build. So for me, as somebody with quite a light frame, trying to get bigger was never going to work. until you. Because what often you'll find, if people hit that 2.4, I think it's 2.2, 2.4 times. And the only way to get past, past that is typically is to, is to start getting into some steroids and doping to try and get the additional um, hormones and stuff that you need. So I spent years trying to get bigger put a little bit of weight on, and then after not training for a couple of weeks, body goes, right, get rid of this, this is inefficient, and goes straight back down to where I was before. And I never got big, like, but, so I've, I've talked about it in a few blogs and stuff, but there's some stuff around male dysmorphia, like that I struggle with still and have done in the past, and, and still have that kind of battle about what I look like. And the really interesting thing around male culture these days, particularly, is the pressure on lads. And you see that steroid use now is, is so there's so stats came out a couple of years ago, I think, or last year, where needle banks do more work with people exchanging steroid needles than they do with people using Class A drugs. And I could go into Nottingham, and I know tomorrow we don't train there. I've never been there, and I can't and not associate myself with it in any way. But I know there's a gym in Nottingham I could go to. Where I could get steroids if you wanted to, if I wanted to, because I know people that have been there, signed up on day one, have been offered gear. Mm-hmm. It's that freely available. We can buy it on Facebook. If you watch the documentaries and stuff, people have done insights into it. That's a really bad place for us to be as a, as a, mm-hmm. as a fitness and health society, or particularly male culture. And a lot of it is driven by, like, this, everyone wants to like a physique model all year round. But the reality is those guys will, will train for that. They'll shred down, they'll dehydrate themselves, they'll take some photos, and then they'll push those out all year long. And everyone's in this, under this impression that that person looks like that all the time. My thing is actually, if I can take my shirt off at any point in the year and look half decent, then I'm happy. And that's just consistency of training and lifestyle. We don't bulk, we don't then bulk and cut. It's not about overeating, undereating, and dehydrating. It's just keep it balanced, healthy, natural. Keep it, keep it simple. Yeah. A long answer to a random <laughs> question that I forced upon you. But are we happy? Yeah, yeah I think it, 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 it like comes. The thing I was, I think I was trying to say was like then being just happy and all like being a bit more happy in our body, that like holistic thing of actually like, is it that your question like, are, are you actually happy? It comes back to that again like, ultimately we do all, the, like training, like we do all, and these all these other things we do in our lives, like we do them to try and be happy and like, I've got, I know someone that he, he does a different form of training and that's just because that's all he's known and he lost like five stone doing it so he knows it's good for him because he was really overweight and he hates it. But he carries on doing it, and I'm like, mate, you don't need to hate like training. Like you shouldn't do. A life's too short for for that, and B, trying to look a certain way. That's why I come back to that as I was saying. Like try, rather than trying to look a certain way, like trying to achieve something with your body and see what it can do, and then like you'll look how you look dependent on a load of other things, and some of those are um, completely outside of our control. Like what genetics you were given, and trying to be and look a certain way that isn't even that you can only achieve through adding in things that aren't natural 
it can't be healthy. Mm. But but mentally, as much as anything, I'm quite big on that side of things. One more, or not? We do. do you build cardio into your sort of general workouts, and how does that complement calisthenics? So like my um, cardio wise, like my big thing, like when I was playing rugby, was I was never the biggest, and I was I was pretty quick, but I wasn't like the I wasn't like absolute jet shoes. Um, which means fast um, <laughs> my thing so like I sort of made my thing was like I'm just going to like outwork everyone and just be the fittest and just tr- basically try the hardest so like my, my, my I've got a, um, when we were talking about this was it, it was in another podcast I my I, I started playing rugby when I, in 1988 when I was six years old at Nottingham and it was I went through all the age groups and only ever played that one club and my, I got a, I know I started in 98 because I've still got a trophy at home that says best effort award which normally means you were rubbish, <laughs> but you tried really I, hard. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got one of those to give out. On but, um, we've got eight of those to give out. On but um, and I sort of a part of me like still like you know when you're doing like sport like a particular position I played on like the wing or foot like you you want to be like the best because you're like flipping could do some really cool stuff type of thing. And really exciting rather than going like you're you're just really you just work really hard it almost sometimes I feel like that sort of takes a shine of it but it was it's what I sort of tried to make my thing and so fitness was something that was just like that I can sort of own that if you know what I mean and just be try and be the fit so I spent a long time <laughs> Cat. a long time trying to be the fittest at the club constantly which meant a lot of cardio type of stuff and so if we're doing fitness tests just absolutely you know, blowing, blowing, um, putting everything into it, and um, and some of that's as um, mentally as about pushing yourself as much as anything. So when I came, like for me, I feel like I've done my fair share of that. So now I've got absolutely zero interest in like doing like set routine things to build my cardio up. I've started doing. I mean, the first time I've, I tried to do a five k, um, I think we tried to do it on the treadmill. Um, and I stopped after about a minute because I was like, I literally can't just, I can't do it. Like, with no reason, literally, the, there was no reason for it other than I just wanted to do some running to be fair with it. But do park runs at the moment and do, I've got a road bike that um, me and my wife just, literally, the cardio I do is a pretty, I don't think I do any single cardio at all now unless my wife is doing it. And we, it's something nice that we just do together. We go, we go on runs to actually just do some nice stuff together, but then also. I'd like to try, I can't help but be competitive, so sometimes we, we rock up at part and I'm like, in the car, I'm like, I'm just dawdling around today, and as soon as it go, and I'm like, oh, that guy, and I'm just saying, like, I can't help, like, I want to dawdle around, but I just can't help it. Um, and then, like, biking is more about, actually, get on the bikes and go, let's go and explore and see some stuff, a little bit like with the training with calisthenics, like, explore what your body can do, like, I want to go out and explore, um, so after the retreat's finished, we've got our bikes, and we're going to go and explore around. Um, France and whatnot, and get into the Alps and see what we'll see if we can get up any hills. But um, that's just more still about like just enjoying like that side of training, enjoying the hills. <laughs> Good, I'll leave it at that. Mine's, yeah. yeah, mine's not that interesting at all, really. Mine's, mine comes down to time that I've got available and then prioritizing the number of sessions I can do. Um, work's inconsistent, it's in terms of like it's all, all, it's all over the place. And, Family life for the last seven months has been a, a challenge. Um, so it's just, yeah, I fit it in, like I'll go for a run. Um, I've got a dog, so I walk a lot actually. And I sometimes power walk, which I don't really like that phrase. <laughs> but I like just get a yon pom with a dog. But he's, he's a, he's a god retriever, so he didn't run well. Like he's slow. Like we walk slowly for all day, <laughs> but he's, he's not got much gas. So if I tried to ride a bike with him, I'd be literally be like 20 meters away and he'd be sat having a piss on something. <laughs> Sometimes put, trying to put higher intensity sessions in. But a lot of the time I'm tired. That's oh. part of our problem. Like I'm, I'm a, and to really have that self-motivation to, to go and hammer myself in the gym or out for a run or whatever, then it's... And I, I'm, I'm, I was very much... I played rugby when I was younger as well. It's very much a, a speed-based athlete. That's what I've always done. So anything was always like sharp burst, high intensity work, then rest. So for me to go out and do a 10K is like the worst thing I could ever imagine. So if I, I can't pace myself, so I go for a 5K, I'll literally do it as fast as I can. And I, can, and, and I, I won't go, I've never, do a, I've never done a 5K and gone, okay, I'll go around again. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm absolutely smoked. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the, it, yeah, massive benefits, 
but fits into what you enjoy and how it fits in. I think that just get a holistic kind of approach to what your priorities are in training and what it does for you. So that is everything. I think we're going to call it a day for the purposes of mm-hmm. wrapping it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Darren. <laughs> you don't get clapped on question time. It's <laughs> just somebody throwing cheese at you. <laughs> um, so that is the end of the special version of Q&A. Live. Live. If you've got any questions that you want to ask us, then put them in the comments below. Um, and until our next Q&A, class dismissed.